Hello Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Mars signs, and welcome to your reading at this time. These readings are timeless, so whenever you come across these readings or when the messages are meant to resonate with you. If you do not connect to the energy of this reading, please feel free to check out any of the other readings I have uploaded. They are all timeless. So from the Wild and Known archetype, your energy at this time is the shadow. And what I was getting from this instinctively was basically your opposite energy on the zodiac would be cancer's energy and cancer is like the emotional emotional nurturing mother so this could be what you may actually be needing from your shadow is more nurturing and compassion for yourself the shadow represents the unspeakable the unwelcome and the denied although every card in the archetypes deck has a shadow potential this card asks us to delve into the qualities of the shadow itself. We often think that the shadow can be purified, illuminated, and made right through effort and achievement. However, it is typically the case that our lofty pursuit of ascension and perfection is the very source of shadow material itself. By rejecting parts of ourselves and the world, we begin to separate from the whole. Rather than getting to know the qualities and content of our shadow, we busy ourselves with avoiding its presence. This is denial. When this card appears, it is time to take inventory of those things that you've been denying when the mind responds with no anything but that. You are touching shadow. Find support for this deep inner work and move toward the shadow with patience and compassion, revealing unconscious aspects of the self and the world, denying unconscious aspects of the self and the world. To go deeper, owning your own shadow by R. Johnson. So what I was getting from this is like cancer being your opposite energy. I would advise looking into more of Cancerian's energy, the qualities of a cancer, to work with the shadow energies that come up to have nurture and compassion for the aspects that you may not like to observe about yourself, your fears, insecurities, traumas, things of that nature. Clarifying your energy from the Wildwood Tarot. We do have the Four of Bows with a cause for celebration. Fours, again, can be linked to Cancer's energy. Being house number four, our roots, family, and foundation. Fulfillment. Oh, celebration. A celebration of health, wealth, and security in a time... To relax and enjoy the bounty of good fortune or labor, a holiday or festival at a time of plentiful, plentiful fertility and creativity. While focus, effort, and dedication are inherent in the mastery of any skill that requires patience and practice, a time for relaxation and thankful celebration is also valuable. Without the timely and earned reward of indulgence, pleasure, and friendship, we become attached, detached and isolated from those with whom we share a kinship and a common moral code and bond. To be able to relax and share in the bounty is a part of the human spirit's healing process and is how we re refresh and nourish our soul. Whether the celebration is a tra transitional, traditional festival or the marking of a personal achievement, to allow the empowering energy of carefree celebration and laughter to revitalize our resolve and rekindle our desire is a gift from which reflection on the beauty, generosity, and natural wonder becomes available. To share and exchange the bounty of good fortune with those we love and respect is the most rewarding celebration in which we can indulge ourselves. So let's clarify this energy with the mermaid tarot. Four of bows and the cause of celebration. This can be a karmic gateway as well. The four of wands, right? What you put in, you will get back. So there is a call to put in a little bit of time and effort into your shadow work. We have the Knight of Swords. You'll be able to see clearly and with precision. Cut out anything that no longer suits your journey. Like things that you've already mastered. Emotions that you've already overcome. Then we have the Eight of Wands. Choosing your direction with power and purpose. Perhaps even being kind of picky of who you choose to surround yourself with. And celebrate life with. Um, this could be fast moving energy. There could be somebody offering you something i'm getting the energy of like a promotion or a job that's not going to apply for everyone but that could be where the celebration comes from somebody comes in to offer you something that excites you 
Then we have the Great Bear. This is the card of judgment. So this is kind of like going into oneself and seeing from deeper perspectives. Fear of death and damnation have mutated into distorted view of the card known traditionally as judgment, as a call of righteous souls from their graves by an angel on judgment day. But the universe is much simpler than religious theology theologies would have it. The laws of evolution and cause and effect have more to do with divine judgment than human morals. If on a personal level life is squandered in the pursuit of vain glories and pretentious ambition, the painful void left within an individual soul will make itself known through despair and frustration. On the earthly or universal sphere, if we abuse the ecosystem and lay waste to world resources, nature will find a way to redress the balance by its own evolutionary means. Nature is not vindictive, just practical. By the same token, if we take, if time is spent educating and understanding ourselves, this investment in wisdom will help us live our lives with a deeper respect for all humanity and nature. Life will be enriched by the joy and beauty of the universe. The Great Bearer is the guardian of the forest ways and holds the power of life and death over those who transgress its laws. After experiencing the stages of being stripped and laid bare, the initiate experiences renewed strength and wisdom and is reborn into a place of quiet stillness, peace, and rest that allows the healing process to be completed. The new whole reconstituted person lies hibernating, full of potential, ready to meet the coming spring with energy and joy. The only thing in life that is assured is that if you wait long enough, it will change. How you survive that change and who you are after is up to you. The major element in the process is judgment of yourself and others. This may relate to an assessment regarding a personal matter or situation and could be linked to the process of forgiving. It may also relate to a group or social decision. In the process of judgment, both as an individual and on the universal level, honesty is the key. Be honest, be forgiving, be patient, but most of all, be assured change is at hand. Remember the universe has a long memory. Nothing is ever forgotten. Renewal, universal mind, inescapable truth, the even hand, cosmic law, reincarnation, the sleep of the just, karma, nothing is forgotten, the cage of guilt, reaping what has been sown, and the divinity of forgiveness. So that makes a lot of a lot of sense with the shadow energy here, right? This is like going into the cave of oneself to honor and bear witness to oneself, one's shadow, and find forgiveness for everything that has transpired in your journey, choices, perhaps even mistakes that you feel you have made, finding forgiveness and accepting them applies to the celebration, right? You're letting go of things that perhaps have been weighing heavily on you. We have the Seven of Swords, so there can be like a lot of information out there or even coming through at this time, but it's almost like to focus on what you need and leave the rest. So this is only taking anything at any given moment that actually kind of helps you work through something. And if there's a lot of information piled on, not really paying attention to all the information, just focusing on the most important to go within with the Eight of Swords. Because this Eight of Swords can feel like you're trapped, bound, and stuck. But this could be almost, I'm almost getting this energy of kind of like um, an intervention of the divine, right? They're like holding you captive to work through some issues so that you can have joy and celebration back in your reality. So let's take a look at the future outcome for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Mars signs. What is in store for the future for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Mars signs? So we definitely have this balancing energy with the two of pentacles, right? I could see this as a balance of your light and shadow. Seeing them um, as playing like both a role in your, in your characteristic and who you, and who you are in this moment or how to become, right? Finding that acceptance and balance of self. There's definitely a healing that is transpiring through your journey. The Nine of Cups does represent emotional contentment. So feeling emotionally satisfied with who we are. 
Then we have the Nine of Swords. There's definitely going to be some fears and insecurities coming through your shadow. Your shadow is a bitch of an energy. It's not an energy. It's the. It's basically the energy of everything we're afraid and scared to admit about ourselves or to see about ourselves, right? So this is not. It's not a fun journey through this awakening. Definitely going to be some fears and insecurities. You might have nightmares. Um, you could potentially have a dream and wake up in the morning and hate how the dream played out. So with that, you can apply your conscious mind to your subconscious. So before getting out of bed, you just go back into the, the vision of the dream itself and correct it however you choose to do so. We have the Eight of Cups reversed. So this is almost like coming out of fear and isolation and back into community, friends, things of that nature. I do want to read the Eight of Sword or Eight of Cups reverse for you though, to see what the book says about it. No matter what circumstance, situation, or problem you are trying to leave behind, you know, just know that where you go, you also take yourself. In order to make sure you don't make this mistake again you have to deal with the constant in the equation you get clear on what you want so you don't have to go through this pain again so this could be just your own cycles and patterns right like we all have cycles and patterns a lot of us have cycles and patterns and like the type of people we date right like we a lot of people don't really pick the right people for them because they're coming from a place of like a wounded energy the shadow energy haunting you so without embracing it and learning to accept your shadow, you become imbalanced here and you can make hasty decisions that lead to ultimately mistakes. But then once you start to recognize and see the patterns of this behavior, you understand your own psychology and start working through it to heal it, to make better choices, not to run away from the good things, but to work with them, right? Some wise advice made for some of you out there not to be ca um, caught up in the next best thing kind of energy. Because the shadow can kind of feed off that energy if we're always like looking for excitement in our lives, for example, or sometimes even chaos, whatever it is to mix it up because we get tired of things plateauing. We jump to the next object, but then we never end up sticking anything through and it never grows beyond our own limitations. So if you can stick something through, even though you may feel like tired or perhaps you feel it almost like you should be doing more with your, your life, your reality, whatever the case is, maybe it's a call to learn to embrace the here and now and what you are doing as you are working through your own stuff where you are is exactly where you need to be. You don't need to like hop the fence to greener grass kind of thing. I'm gonna pull you an animal spirit guide for the next week. So if you see this animal spirit on social media, in your dreams, in nature, know that it is trying to connect with you. So we have the crocodile. of the crocodile i was joking about the crocodile the other night because there was an ex of mine spreading rumors about me and some some boys in the hood trying to be thugs and i was getting all pissed off and i just started fantasizing about like mutating them all and feeding them to a bunch of crocodiles like wouldn't that just be nice but this is just like it goes back to that nine of swords the fear of perhaps there's even a fear of perception of what other people will think of you you're just tired of hearing it but the crocodile so feel free to do some more information on the crocodile spare guide i will google it quickly here it's 
So I'm just looking up the crocodile spiritual symbolism. You can look up crocodile as an animal spirit guide or animal totem. Um, crocodiles are symbols of wisdom and the protector and keeper of all knowledge. Therefore, the ferocious beast signifies a new beginning of the term of renewal and growth. Take time to integrate the changes in life. It's interesting, in the Wildwood Tarot, it speaks of um, two sections of the brain. The mammalian brain, which I believe is like the top actual brain. And then they have the reptilian brain, which the brain sits on top of. So I believe the reptilian brain would actually be like the cerebellum. The keeper of knowledge and wisdom. And just something I learned that I should... Oh, look at that. I opened it right to the freaking page. Well, bam! Um, resting, submerging, collecting energy, and cooling off. The crocodile reminds us to step back from the external world and turn inward. Now is not the time for decisions, action, or discussion. The cock... The croc... The crocodile's... Ma blah, 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 blah. The crocodile's mantra is wait. This doesn't mean lying around hoping life's challenges will disappear. The crocodile is much smarter than that. It means intentionally withdrawing, gathering our awareness, observing and building energy. Fill up from the vital reserve so your next move comes from a place of wisdom and power. When in balance, wise patient and a silent powerhouse. When out of balance, feel stuck and lashes out. To bring into balance, rest and the makarasna pose, which is the crocodile pose in yoga. Feel free to Google that. Um, actually... I'll just show it to you quick. Pose. Crocodile pose. Yogas. And the yogas. So I guess there's that pose. This is the pose I thought it was. Yeah. Here. stretching and opening either way um yoga and stretching will help kind of release some tension calm your energy make better choices and like making choices from a healed place instead of a fearful insecure place right making smarter choices for you on your journey So for the closing message, I'm going to pull you a card from the Language of Flowers. What is the fleur de jour for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Venus, and Rising? It's no, it's no surprise to see that. We have stock. Slow down. The pace must abate before it's too late. And I'm saying it's no surprise because it says slow down, right? Like the crocodile's energy is basically wait. It's almost like let let energies come to you and absorb them and transmute them before actually making action like action or movements which kind of makes sense with this eight of cups right reverse because in the eight of cups she is walking away back into the ocean of emotions but with a reverse it's kind of like a standstill you're finding this balance here there's no need to push forward at this time You've got to let let the kind of dust settle right to see clearly to make decisive and act like better moves for us on our path so that is the reading i have for you at this time capricorns i hope it resonates if it does please feel free to like this video share it with every capricorn you've ever met that'd be greatly appreciated and do not forget to subscribe i will see you next time many blessings live love and light take care